In this video, we're going to learn how to write shell scripts from scratch. We already know a lot of Unix commands, and we can actually put these commands into a script, and then we can make the script an executable and run it from the command line. So let me give you a simple example. I'm going to start with uh, this directory, data shell forward slash molecules, and here I'm going to start writing a new script. I'm going to say nano process dot sh. I'm opening a new file. Dot sh is a common convention for shell scripts. So this is a text file. And in the very first line, I'm going to say number sign, which is a shorthand for a comment. So everything to the right from this line is going to be a comment. Then I'm going to say exclamation mark, forward slash bin, forward slash bash. Next line. So this first line is called shebang in Unix. And this line points to the interpreter that will be used to process the script when the script is made executable. So in principle, you can write scripts in any uh, scripting language. It could be Python, it could be R, could be Bash, could be something else. And when you make this script executable, the very first line, the shebang, tells the operating system where to find the interpreter that's going to process the script. So in this case, this is going to be bash. And then in the second uh, line, I'm going to type a Unix command. Uh, I will choose a very simple, uh, simple command. I'm just going to say echo hello there. Echo, if you remember, is a simple uh, print command in bash. So I'm going to save this, Control o confirm the name, Control x to exit. Here's my script. And then I'm going to run it. So I'm going to show you two different ways to run a bash script. The first one, you can say bash followed by the script name. And when I hit return, it runs the executable line in the script. So it prints hello there. Another way to run a script is to make it executable. So let's take a look at the attributes of this file. process.sh is a text file, and the very first column shows permissions of this file. Ignore the very first character. It's not really important to us right now. And then we have three sets, and each set has uh, three characters in it. So it's read, write, and execute, read, write, and execute, read, write, and execute. The first set refers to the owner of the file, the user. The second set refers to the group that owns the file. And the third set refers to everybody else on the system. So each file has an, the owner, the user, and also a group. Each user from this group will have uh, these permissions for this file. So in our case, file process.sh, these are permissions for the user, the owner of the file, read, write, and execute. So there's no X. So that means that this file is not executable. Everybody else in the group user 120, in this group right here, can read this file, but they cannot modify it. They cannot write into it, and they cannot execute it. And everybody else on the system, which basically means in this case, every other user except for user 120, uh, doesn't have any permission to this file, so they cannot read, write, or execute this file. So what I want to do is want to make this file executable for the user. I'm going to type chmod, change mode of the file, user plus x. So I'm giving the user permission to execute this file, followed by the file name. So now if I run ls-l on the file, you see that now we have the x permission the user, the owner of the file, can actually run this file. And then you also see that there is the asterisk added at the end of the file name. And this is simply to show that this is a, an executable file. So to actually run it, I cannot simply say process.sh. That won't work. It says command not found. And the reason is, for security reasons, the current directory is never part of the path on Unix. So I have to tell Unix, uh, the operating system, that I'm going to uh, run this script called process.sh, and this script is sitting in the current directory. 
The way to do this is you would type dot forward slash and then process.sh and then you hit enter. So here we're running an executable file process.sh that is sitting in the current directory. So dot means the current directory. And it runs, as you can see. Now let's modify our script. Let's make it a little bit more complex. So I'm going to open this script in nano again. And I'm going to comment this line. And I'm going to start writing the executable part uh, of the script from scratch. My first command would be echo dollar sign one. And that's it. Echo dollar sign one. I will save the script. Control X. Uh, save modified buffer. Yes. And then confirm the file name. So here is my script. It contains a single executable line. Echo dollar sign one. And then I'm going to run this script. So it doesn't print anything. Let's pass an argument to the script. Process, let's say, 1, 2, and 3. And as you can see, it actually printed back the very first argument. So let's try something else. Let's say uh, 4, 5, 6. It prints 4. So basically, this script prints back the first argument that I passed to it. So here's my script once again. Echo print dollar sign one means the first argument. Let's print the first three arguments. And let's say the first three arguments are, and then dollar sign one, dollar sign two, and dollar sign three. I'm going to save it. Control O, confirm the file name, Control X to exit. Here is my script. And now I'm going to run it. So I'm going to pass 1, 2, 3, and 4 to it. And as you can see, it prints back the first three arguments exactly as uh, it was coded. Now, let's try something more advanced. Let's say we want to print back all the arguments that were passed to a script. So I'm going to open the script in nano again. I'm going to uh, comment this line, and then I'm going to say the arguments are, and then I'm going to type dollar sign, add sign, then I'm going to save this. So now, uh, let me show you the script. And now let's pass, let's say, five arguments to this script. And it actually prints all of them. It says the arguments are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dollar sign, add sign, prints back all arguments in a single line. This is useful because you can actually cycle through these arguments. So let me open the script once again. And let me do the following. So I'm going to comment this line. And then I'm going to say for, let's say word, in dollar sign add sign do then done at the end and then in between do and done I'm gonna print the value of the loop variable word. Let me save this. Here's my file and now let's run and pass five arguments to it. So here we go. We're actually looping through all the arguments and at each loop iteration, we're printing the corresponding argument. There are five arguments, and then there are five lines in the output. 